What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five with my man, Eric Sheetaber. We're going to be talking about tonight's uh, MLB slate. I did want to give everybody a heads up. I will be out for the next, um, most of the next two days. I will be around after that, but I um, I will up update with any of thoughts I have in Discord. Feel free to at me in the general chat, and uh, I'll talk about any of my thoughts in there. I'm just going to be, I, ha I have some things I have to tend to, so I'm not going to be able to, to be around and do my normal posts and builds and all that stuff like that, but I will be happy to give away every bit of what I'm doing. Um, with that said, Sheets, I appreciate all the covering lately, and uh, how was your weekend? And, and then we'll get into the tonight's slate. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a busy weekend. A lot of different things. My my kids were home, and and, and I, was, I was everywhere. All the stuff. Um, ready to um, to get back uh, after it, baseball wise. Mm -hmm. I, I had a um, had a couple of okay results. Nothing great, but I listen. I was starting to cash in a big one at least, which is by the way, that's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, got to watch. Uh, really strong performance by the Suns last night. That was a... Uh... What? The, I mean, <laughs> are, like of all things, that, that might be one of the most surprising results I've ever seen in an NBA game. It has never been a game seven home loss by that many points um, by any team. Not to mention that they were healthy and this is a team that is particularly good at home and absolutely never gets blown out. Has not been blown out in two years. Well, so, here's, the, here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's, here's, here's the example. So I wasn't really watching the first half. I was just kind of just like seeing the scores on my phone. And when I saw, for example, how much what Chris Paul had at the half, I literally went to Twitter to see when he got injured. You know what I mean? Like, I really right, thought right. that he was out after like three minutes or something like that. And then I'm like, wait a minute, does that mean Booker and eight were injured too? You know what I mean? Like, right, it. right. And I'm like, wait, is this real? I mean, oh my God. It's uh, uh, mind blowing. I mean, I, I and, and you know, a lot of credit to the Mavs, obviously. I, I really, really think. Um, I really think that, they, you know, they did an incredible job, but yeah, you, you can't course. overlook these things that keep happening. And it's just the look, if you, if you want to keep betting on Chris Paul to win titles and all these things that everybody keeps saying, oh, elimination game, people, people were using that as a reason to play him in this whole series. Oh, he's going to, he's going to go off because, you know, th th this is a game where a closeout game and all this stuff. I'm like, we, we're just using narratives that aren't there. This guy is oh, one of the worst yeah. playoff performers <laughs> in all time. And I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to say it. He's a great player. He's one of the worst uh, playoff performers in NBA history. And, and when it matters, he's not James Harden quite, but he's close. And that was really, really pathetic what happened. I honestly, I didn't know if he was, I, I don't think I, there's no rumors of him being hurt, but I've never seen anybody just collapse the way he did after those first two games. I mean, he was, yeah. he was arguably the worst player on the court for the last five games. And who would have thought that was possible after dominating the first round series. And then the, the first two games against Dallas anyway, very shocking stuff, but we All have right. our final four now in the NBA and uh, it should be a, it should be a fun one. I'm looking forward to it, but we'll get they, they, got, they got, they got the warriors back and, and you know what I mean? Like yep. uh, NBA, the NBA machine is good. They got, they got, they got the warriors. They got Curry against Luca in the, in, in the semis. And then you got, then you got all kinds of defense on the other side. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but uh, I actually like the defensive games. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I grew up in the '90s and had to watch yeah. you know 65 to 64 games against the, with the Knicks and Bulls, and I enjoy it. Yeah. Actually. yeah. So, all right. Well, let's get into the NBA MLB slate. Sheets, any sort of overall thoughts on the slate tonight, or just want to get jump right into the game? game yeah, game? I, I, you know, DraftKings wants wants everybody to 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 be able to tell their grandchildren that they played the San Francisco Giants at some point. You know, so. <laughs> So they're gonna. <laughs> they they decided that uh, even though they were going into cores, they were gonna let them stay the price they usually are, and they're gonna tell. Well, we're gonna test ownership versus uh, versus upside and ownership versus medians and what pitchers to use and and it's a uh, you know it's, it's a it's a pretty cool DFS slate honestly because as, as far as I'm seeing, there's you know two really really logical you know stacks to play. And two pretty freaking logical pivots, actually, yep. maybe three, and 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 the pitchers range from kind of kind of crappy to just okay. So it's uh, hey, I think it's I think it's a fun DFS type slate. If not, you know, maybe it's not the greatest, the greatest job by the algorithms pricing these guys this uh, in this slate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's 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 definitely interesting. Um, Let's get into it. Let's go. Let's go game by game. Let's pull your screen up. Oh, it is up. Sorry. Um, let's go game by game. And uh, we'll talk about the starting off with the uh, Yankees at Baltimore. And I'm going to double check my weather as we're going through this. I do want to point out that things really are different. Uh, the, the, I mean, look, we saw it on Friday with the big slate, tons of runs scored. 
big performances from all over the place. And we're starting to get that warm weather. We're starting to get pitchers who are getting extended. I mean, Urias, like the Dodgers and Phillies, I, I, I happen to have it on in the background because I was at my family's and they watch every freaking game. I, I could not believe, I mean, you got guys, get, Urias gives up eight runs and stayed in the game and, and pitched six innings. And that just doesn't happen. And, but now we're, we're getting to where there's the guys are stretched out. They're getting a pitch a little longer, which actually is going to increase the offensive perform, output um, when you don't have just a different pitcher every inning. So anyway, we should just be, just be aware of it. Uh, this is one of the stacks that I think is a, is completely viable tonight as a, a pivot stack, as you, I think you would say. And I think that that is something that I would consider doing and uh, trying to, trying to attack. Look, we we've seen some good stuff from, from Radish so far. Um, or some okay stuff. He picked really well against St. Louis in that one game. But I, I, I will attack that Baltimore bullpen. The Cannon Yards is not the, the hitter's park that it used to be, but does have 12 miles an hour wind blowing out to right field. And I think the Yankees are a very viable stack. So that's where I stand on this one. And the Severino chalk, I'm, I'm 50-50 on this one, whether I want to actually pull the trigger. He hasn't looked right to me all season long. And for him to be as popular as he's probably going to be tonight, I, I just don't know if I want to eat that chalk. How about you? Yeah, so... Uh... I have Severino as one of the, you know, the top two, you know, just overall pitchers, um, you know, above, you know, 7K, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and he's going to be one of the top two owned. I, pr I presume that him and Peralta are going to be the top two, two spend ups you know, by, by a lot. Right? Um, mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm guessing. Um, and Look, I mean, I, I have no problem with it if I can. I really don't. Uh, but again, same as usual, is that if you're going to play that, then you just you just can't play, you know, you just can't play uh, the Colorado game um, and yep. probably can't play the Yankees either. I mean, I think the Yankees are going to be pretty logical pivot. I think they're going to get owned, um, but they're just not going to get as owned as some of the others. Um, uh, I'm not going to play Bradish. Um, I'm not going to play the Orioles. So for me. I'll play Severino with the right teams mm -hmm. uh, and I'll avoid him with others, but he certainly looks like, a, you know, one of the top three options for me. Yeah. It's just so hard with him because he, he really, there's been no, there's really hasn't looked right all year long to me. Um, his, his control isn't as good. He's walking, you know, guys at a much higher rate than he has in the past. So I, I just feel like this might be a spot where you could consider, uh, consider making a fade if he gets too owned. And, and there is some weather concerns in this game a little bit. Um, more more for the pitching I would worry I think they'll get the game in but it's it's that's another reason yet another one to, to argue against Severino is maybe you could have some pop-ups in the middle of the game there's there's a chance but again it's early in the morning so it's hard to know all right uh Seattle Toronto Sheets what are you doing here well I mean you got you got Kikuchi revenge if you're interested um against his former team and he's cheap uh so that's certainly a cheapo option you could play if you want to spend up i don't you know that's certainly possible um i uh, for me i'd probably just rather just go all the way down to miley if i'm gonna if i'm gonna pay down i guess um that's uh, i don't know but he certainly certainly is viable and i definitely like toronto as another at least my opinion pretty logical mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what i mean so so that was one of the other teams i had in mind for that for that role so maybe kikuchi um, and certainly Toronto. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have, again, I always, you know, when everybody wants to stack against Flexen, I remind people that he doesn't tend to get overly bombed too hard, although he's been giving up some, some a lot more hard contact lately. Um, but if nobody's going to play the Toronto, I mean, I, I, these early, these are early ownership projections. I just, I'm not buying any of it that not any of these guys are going to be more than 5%. There's just no way. I don't care what other things are out there. Toronto is too powerful of an offense. Um, uh, if it does stay this way, I would say that that's an, just an awesome team to stack. And I, I would actually probably have them uh, potentially ahead of the Yankees. I, I think they'd, they'd be, a, if, if they were going to be 5% or low, if you get 5% on these guys, I think I actually would prefer to go this route rather than the 10% Yankee guys or something like that. So I really like the Toronto stack. Um, if, if again, if they stay really low on, uh, how about Houston, Boston? What, what are your thoughts on this one? I'm kind of in a void mode for this game. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, you could talk, you could talk up any, really any four of these sides, you know, whether you're pitching mm -hmm. or, or, or hitting or whatever, it's not quite going to get there to any of it, you know, but you know, let's listen. Whitlock, like I said, he, he, he showed, he's shown flashes, um, but it's not like, you know, maybe Houston's not as good as people think they are, but they're still good. Um, 
So I don't know if I would go to Whitlock at 7,600. I would just rather pay down, I think, more than that, if I'm going to do that. Um, and Odorizzi, he, you know, he's been putting up games. I mean, I have to say. Yeah. Um, and did, did he not – was he on Boston at some point? I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah he was, I believe. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I don't know yeah. if I can get to him. But you know what? If you want to play – listen, if you want to play the Colorado game, you want to play any of the chalky stuff, I mean, you got to do something. Maybe, maybe Odorizzi is kind of a low-owned a low thing you can do. Let's see. Puts up what twenty points a game nowadays. I I don't know if that's you know repeatable, but um and Boston still has this uh, this aura of being you know having these good players. So maybe he's going to be really low owned. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind taking a shot at Rizzi. Doesn't feel comfortable, but no GPP shot should. Yeah, I I I, I probably wouldn't do it. Don't won't do it myself with either of the pitching. And I think all of the hitting, like, again, I'm, the ownerships I'm looking at, I just, I can't believe that nobody is playing these things. People, no, even when Oda Rizzi was really good, people always wanted to pick on it because he would right. give up hard contact. Um, I, I, I'm shocked to see these early projections at, at these guys' ownerships. I'm, again, I'm not totally buying it. If they stay low owned, another great pivot off of the, what's going to be the chalky stacks. Um, I, I would side with the hitting ahead of the pitching here. I'm also really surprised not to see Houston have some ownership because as much as Whitlock has stuff, this is exactly the kind of guy you want to try and target against because he can get wild. He's still young and he's going to be all over the place. And I'm still, I'm still iffy on the Boston bullpen uh, personally. So I, I actually think I would lean the Houston side of it, but I could see an argument being made for both. I just don't have a strong that I really, really need to play these guys. I, I like you, it's more, more of a stay away, but something I could see myself turning on to later, later in the day. If I, if, you know, if we can get some more accurate ownership, some of these projections, like Oda Rizzi projecting for eight fantasy points as a starting pitcher is kind of a, like insane. Um, so anyway, it just, I don't, I don't, I don't buy these early projections and I don't buy the early ownership. So I, I want to see what happens, but if, if they're low owned, this is, a, this is a definitely a game you could target. Um, you got the wind blowing out to left at 12 miles an hour. It's pretty solid. So. Uh, I definitely could see the argument there. Um, how about uh, the next one? Uh, I believe it's Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta. I, Sorry, I, actually, Louis, I, actually have, I actually have St. Louis. In yeah, my fault. St. Louis. This game very may, well may not play, but Sheets, you could you could answer that better than I could. Yeah, the sheet, the, the sheet, the, the, the Mrs. Sheets forecast for this um, is uh, is is Eric. If you're if you're gonna get home, please avoid the rush hour. There's tornado warnings. And, 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 and thunderstorm warnings. And I'm like, when, when's the, when though, Stacey, when just, I don't know, supposedly around rush hour. I don't know. So she's on top of it. Yeah. Um, I, I'll just say that there is, there is stuff going on. So, so, uh, so I would, you know, listen, I would, I would stay on top of this thing. And, um, but I will say this, if, if, if you do get like thunderstorms like earlier, mm -hmm. like in the four o'clock range, then they probably play, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, but you know, listen, watch the weather in this. Um, I don't think I'm going to play any of this anyway. Um, although it's really interesting. I mean, look, if I got, if I got the weather, go ahead. I didn't even know what is Trevor Williams playing still I, I, to see, is he any good? I don't why, why is he on the Mets? I thought the Mets were pretty good this year. I, I don't know. I, yeah, he I, doesn't, I, he, I don't think, I think the idea is that he pitches a few innings probably. He hasn't gone uh, out, gotten out of the fourth yet in any start, but, um, including the last one where he didn't give up any runs or anything. So. You know, uh, does, St. does St. Louis ever ever go against a lefty? I mean, do they just? I mean, every time I, I look at them, like, it's oh, always another righty, gets another righty, gets another yeah. righty, <laughs> and they just are just loaded with righties. I mean, yeah, they, just, yeah. they don't. No matter what, they they. I, I don't understand how you build teams like this. Like, I know there's some, but like, why would you build a team with like all right-handed hitters? Like, it's just you should you should have a mix. I mean, this is everybody else does. I don't know why they they've been like this for years now, but but anyway, yeah, I I, I don't think there's anything I really want to do in this game. Um, at all anyway so i'm i'm, I'm crossing this one off basically so I'm what at. do you think of uh of wade Miley 4400 so is that what you you have here um yeah. uh, oh pittsburgh chicago i'm sorry i was looking at i was yeah. like wait a minute I've a, yeah um yeah I, I think that he's pitching against pittsburgh and he's 4400 i think that's pretty much what we need to know the problem is i don't think he has much of a leash he looked horrible his first mm -hmm. outing um, I don't know what leash they're going to give him, to be honest with you. It is Pittsburgh. He's 4,400. It depends on how you feel about pitching on this slate. And I don't feel incredible about a lot of pitching on this slate. So I think this is the kind of slate where I would, like we were talking about Severino chalk and potentially Kikuchi chalky-ish. I think that's when you probably do want to play the David, the, the, sorry, the, the Wade Miley. Um, so I'm, I'm very open to it personally. And for what it's worth on top of everything else, 
uh, it is probably worth noting that there is some pretty strong winds blowing out to right in Wrigley, 11 miles an hour for which is a stadium that, that, you know, again, not just because it's windy in Chicago, but it actually does affect things more because of the old stadium and the way that it's built. So you're going to, the wind will play a factor. So I, I, I feel a little, a little, a little nervous with, with, with taking pictures in games like that, but at the same time, he's 4,400. Well, let's, uh, let's, I, let's, let's talk about that for a second, because I'm, 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 I was going to ask you about the, the wind because I'm getting a little bit of, 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 of weird value in, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, on the hitting side, mm -hmm. um, I, I, maybe that's because some wind blowing out is priced into this projection a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, did you getting any Chicago? I mean, we don't like to play mm -hmm. Chicago in general, but on a slate where you want to yeah. try to be different, I mean, you, you be into that at all? Absolutely, yeah. I think that one through you got Gomes at at, at two point five. So you know, we think he's going to bat fourth today. They've mixed their lineup around a lot. Schwindel at, at batting sixth, even at two point six. Wisdom in between them has, has definitely got power. Hap has power. Suzuki has power. Contreras has power. Um, Suzuki less so, but they, they, there's enough power in there. Though. I think this actually is a pretty viable stack. And uh, again, as I want to, I want to try to pick on, uh, it's not Peters. It's the problem is it's more of a bullpen game, yeah. but it's a really bad bullpen. So <laughs> it does feel like a good spot, a good uh, spot to take a shot. And I would go even further and say that if you're not going to play Miley, then I think you should consider some of the, the Pirates' bats as horrible as they are. These offenses are terrible, but good hitting conditions and bad pitching uh, could 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 even things out a little bit. So I, I I certainly get the argument for both sides of it. I think I'd lean more towards the Chicago side of it and probably as, as a secondary stack more than a main stack, but I, there's definitely some argument there for a full stack here. I can get it. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's talk about the next one. We've got uh, Milwaukee, Atlanta. What are we going to do? Because we have two pretty good pitchers and certainly pitchers with upside, especially Peralta. I, I, I don't know, Sheets. This feels like a stay away at the moment to me. How about you? Yeah. From hitting. I, uh, yeah, oh, from hitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, look, as usual, the only, the, 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 there's always an argument to, to play the um, to play the bats on the other side of the highest known pitcher. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, you know, listen, I'm not saying Peralta's necessarily be the highest stone, but between him and Severino, they're going to definitely eat up a bunch of it. Um, so you could certainly make the argument. You could certainly also just, you know, knowing Peralta, you, you could see him get wild sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you could certainly, and it's not as if he's against somebody terrible, you know, like in, right. if, you know, Atlanta's got some hitters. So if they do get to him and, you know, they even make him waste all this stuff in three, four, I don't know. I, it's certainly something to do um, if you want to, you know, play chalk elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I have no problem with that in general. But the thing about the Peralta is that as, as why, why he's kind of a, I don't want to say, no, I want to say tough fade because you can fade him. But where I think you do need to use him is just, I think of all these pitchers, he might be yeah. the only I, one I, to be able to have to put up 30. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He's got a seven and a half K prop, which is significantly the highest on the slate. Let me just double check that before I, yeah. yeah, I think, I think he's seven and a half and no one else is more than five and a half today. So that's, it's a pretty, pretty, usually a sign that you probably should take some shots with the guy. <laughs> um, so I, I probably will actually play Peralta if I end up playing one lineup tonight, just because I want the upside, but I, I agree. I mean, it's a scary spot against Atlanta. I mean, we've seen, we, we know that's a tough offense and, uh, but again, with, you know, and especially, you know, with Acuna here, but I would say if you're not going to play Peralta that you want to try and use Acuna as a one-off, like I'm just going to keep reminding everybody there's this guy will be the best fantasy producer over the next five years. I believe it. I mean, you look, look at his game log. He just gets there every, every day. He doesn't hit a home run. And sometimes when he does, he steals a base. He he's going to get you. He's like, he just always gets points. And there just isn't anybody else in baseball. You feel as certain is going to do that other than Acuna. And he'll run every time he walks. He, it just, it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's like a better version of Jose Ramirez. So I, I, I just, I'm just going to play Acuna if I'm not playing Peralta. That's what I would say. Yeah. I mean, again, like I said, if Peralta's not around the plate, I mean, and then you're going to, you know, you're going to walk Acuna for the first yeah. batter of the game. I mean, that's going to be a long day. You know there's, seven, there, there's seven points to start the game right away. Yeah, exactly. He's stealing second right away. I promise you that. Yeah. Um, uh, anything else? I think we can move on to the next one. Um, Slate is bigger than I thought it was for some reason. Uh, yeah, but just, 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 just to, re just to, to really get back to it. So I, I, I'm not getting any Ian Anderson. Um, yeah. And I'm not getting any Milwaukee. Yep. Um, that's makes perfect sense to me. 
All right. Uh, L.A. and Texas uh, sheets. This is a guy who I think might be an interesting, you know, pivot off of some of the Chuck. I think he's going to. Which one? <laughs> pretty low owned. Uh, well, sorry, Syndergaard. Actually, yeah. I think John, I think they both are, um, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. But I, I, I think Syndergaard starting to find some things. Here's a free one for the day of a bet that I would have put out there. Syndergaard at four and a half strikeouts is pretty egregious and pretty offensive. Um, it's not like this matchup is, doesn't have strikeouts in it either. I know that he's been his strikeout numbers haven't been quite as good, but uh, this season. But he struck out seven the last time out against Tampa Bay and five and a third. He pitched seven full innings, even though he only had three strikeouts against Boston the game before that. And he had six strikeouts the game before that against Baltimore. He's starting to trend more back in the right direction, and I think that 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 number is that's my favorite bet of of the slate is is the Syndergaard over four and a half strikeouts. That just seems at least one strikeout too low to me. Um, and I think if he start if we really start to think he's you know he's starting to look come back into form. This is a guy we'd be paying 10 5 4 as the chalk on this slate. So if we think he's got that upside, why, why wouldn't we play Syndergaard here? Especially, I mean, great too, but I, I think Syndergaard is, is my preferred option of the two. How about you? So, so we're, we're going we're gonna to do this right now. So let's go baseball, MLB. Uh, let's find pitcher props. Let's go to um, pitcher props, strikeouts. So we're going to look for Noah Syndergaard. So over, so over four and a half, you do have to lay the 145. Yeah, that's the only thing about it. I I don't care. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm in this. The guy threw 100 pitches in the last two games. Yeah. Oh, I can't do it. You know, I can't do it because I'm on um, I'm on Zoom. They won't let me. They, they can't. Oh, oh, right, right, right. right. But but I promise you, but I promise everybody that that will be played yeah. um, by me. Um, I like I'm it. I'm totally in. Um, with respect to the to DFS, yeah, like I said, I mean, if you're look, if you're trying to find something, um, I, I, you could find a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. Than kindergarten. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to project well, um, which is good. Um, and yeah, I'm, 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 I'm into that a little bit. Um, actually, I might be quite a bit into that. Um, on the other side, I didn't get to John Gray. I'm getting to the Angels just a little bit, but but mm -hmm. again, the same problem with the Angels I, I highlighted the last time. It's just, whoa, I was about to say it's just expensive to get these guys. Mike Trout has been priced down. Look at that. Mike Trout, only 5,500. Yeah, um, but you got Acuna. He's going to be popular. You got Acuna at 56. How can you not play Acuna? I'm just kidding. Trout's amazing, too. I know. I agree with you. It's yeah. too cheap for him. But he has, I mean, he, he's, uh, Mike Trout is no longer the guy who we should expect to be the best player in baseball. And anybody who says that he's the best hitter in baseball is just, in my opinion, just wrong. Um, but he is, but it is, it is a good price for him. I don't know. I mean, guy, guy, guy puts, I never get to see him play because he plays out wherever. And, you know, yeah. I'm always, my lineups are always dead by the time he gets a second at bat. So I'm not really too worried about ever watching him play. But I just, <laughs> every, every year he's got these numbers though. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, he's every, great. He's, he's one of the, he's one of the best five players in baseball, but guys like Soto and, and Vlad Guerrero and, and Acuna, what these guys are doing is just, I don't know. I just think it's a little bit of another level, especially because one thing Trout doesn't do anymore is he, do, he doesn't run. I don't think he's still on the base this season. Um, which is a big part of why he was productive for fantasy in the past. And uh, it's something that, that makes him a little less interesting to me than usual. But I, yeah, I, I think he's a, I mean, he's going to be a popular play. So if you use him as a one-off, just beware. I would personally rather play Acuna. Um, I'm going to say there's a lot of, there's a lot of guys that are like really good hitters. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, you, you, we, we brought up a couple of them today. I mean, like Acuna, Mm -hmm. um, like guys are like when, uh, I, I used to think about this when I was growing up watching baseball and I was like rooting for a team, like, which guys, when they just got up to the plate, you were just freaking petrified. Like, even though you know that the pitcher gets the guy out more often than they get on base, you just knew you had no chance of getting right. the guy out. You right. know what I mean? And guys like you mentioned, like Soto and Acuna and and, and Trout, like so many, even like even a guy like, like listen, when you when you when you have like a two-run lead and there's a guy in second, like Stanton's up, you like oh, you gotta be kidding me. You know what I mean? Like right. there's a lot of guys that can really swing the bat. You know what yep. I mean? So uh and Trout's one of them. Uh, and Otani's uh, Otani's pretty good too. Absolutely, and Otani will steal base. I don't know why they let him do it, but he uh, still does it. He goes out there and he runs. So you think you I, think I like, you think do you think in five years he's going to be a pitcher or a hitter or what do you think is going to happen? With him? I think he's going to do both. I really do. He's yeah. too good at both things. Yeah, that's uh, he's. It's not like he has a real weakness. Like right. So I think that there's no reason why it should change. I just think we haven't seen any come across anybody else like this. I don't, they, they should, I, I wouldn't try and change anything with them. It's the yeah. best weapon. It's you, I mean, it's really hard to argue that he's not the best player in baseball because he 
overall. Yeah. I mean, it's right? just, yeah. How can you, how can you compare? You're one of the best 20 pitchers and you're one of the best 20 hitters in baseball. Yeah. That's basically unfair. It's a cheat code. Right. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, Kansas city, Chicago, white Sox. I don't know why I don't have a line for this game. And that's, I guess that maybe we have some questions whether Cueto is in fact going to pitch. Uh, I have, I have Keller against Susan. So that's what the question, that's, that's why it's, it's no, there's no line yet. Um, uh, I, I don't think I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't feel incredibly strongly that I should do anything here, but I don't mind the White Sox. Um, I, I don't mind the Royals. It, it, if it's not Cueto, I actually think Cueto is a decent enough guy to get through innings. And he's just that weird little hesitation for teams that have never seen him before. Cause he's never pitched right. in, the, in the American league. Um, hadn't pitched against the Royals. I don't believe except for maybe, maybe once. Um, it's really hard to pick up. It's, 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 he may not, may not be pretty, but he gets through five, six innings and doesn't give up a lot of damage because of that weird delivery. Um, so I, 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 this, I can understand arguments for both sides where maybe Ryan O'Hearn as a one-off probably gets pinch hit for it after a couple of bats, depending on, I, I mean, if, if, if he's batting cleanup, I don't know. I, I, I could see, I think the White Sox would be the one I prefer, but I don't really love either of these stacks, to be honest. Casey, listen, Casey delivered in Coors. I'll say that. They totally delivered. They did. They did. Now, now, they're, now they're back home and back to reality. Um, I, um, I'm not getting to either any of this right now. Um, yep. So I'm, uh, I've heard some talk about Keller. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I mean, I'm, I'm no, no, I mean, the one thing is, I, I want to just say about Keller, though, he got hit around a little bit last time. Actually, I think it was just, no, I think he just got Seager. He got Seager hit a couple home runs off of him. Um, but he's mostly been very good this season as a real life pitcher, not, not a fantasy guy, but, uh, but yeah, he's, I, I just think it's a, it's a game where you probably just don't really want too much of it. That's where I'm at. Do have right, to, so, so what are we right. doing here? Okay. This is a tougher time to fade than anything. This is, there, no, there's no, there's no bigger park upgrade for any team in history. And of course they decided, of course, not to raise the prices for all the giants, which is just frustrating because you'd like to at least have it be a decision um, with some of these guys. If you play the giants, I think you have to play Luis Gonzalez, Joey Bart, Longoria. Longoria actually has a really good history at Coors and is the kind of guy who it could benefit because he doesn't quite have the power he used to. So that, that was that extra 10 feet of carry might be enough to get him to hit one out um, as well. As being, as, is it being easy to pick up the ball? It's really hard not to have some interest in San Francisco. Um, Lamont Wade is like, if you're playing cash, you start with Lamont Wade, Brandon Belt, Wilmer Flores and probably Jock Peterson. I think I really do. I mean, this is like maybe or 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 Yastrzemski. Uh, this is just it's too good of a spot. Uh, what I will say is, you know, to try to play devil's advocate against myself. You have Sensatella, who for whatever reason, and he just got roughed up in San Francisco. By the way, I know. I know. When, but after that happens, you you don't usually see pitchers get roughed up back to back starts against the same team. It usually goes one way one one time and one way the other next time. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> And he is all, has a good history of not giving up a ton of home runs at course, uh, con- considering, you know, the guy who gives up hard contact. So has only given up two home runs this season has actually pitched fairly well at home enough to well enough to where it's not like he's getting crushed, you know, has had multiple outings with only one run. I think he's at three, three of the starts at home. He's only given up one run um, has given up some hits in those games, but is just good enough at limiting enough damage to where if you're trying to find a fade, that's the argument you're going to play with yourself. I don't think people are going to stack against Alex Wood. Alex Wood is a pitcher that should have trouble in Coors. Um, uh, I actually think on FanDuel, I, I would consider a very long shot play of Alex Wood at, at, if you wanted to play the San Francisco the Giants stack because he's 7,400. And I do think it's a reasonable enough chance that he could get a quality start, get you you know through there and, and, and the savings maybe gets you there. But I, I don't know, just that's maybe probably even a little too cute for this big of a slate, but... I'm not particularly interested in the Rockies, even though Wood does have some trouble over there, and they are going to be lower owned. Um, they're going to be they're actually going to be pretty low owned, considering they have a 5.4 run total, because uh, everybody's just going to play the Giants instead. The wind's blowing out; it's hot in Coors. You just feel like it, there's going to be offense in this game, but I think most of it comes from the San Francisco side, and I would probably just have to treat it like I always do: take my three favorite bats, which would be Wade, Belt, and probably Yastrzemski or Peterson. And use that as my secondary stack with a team that's going to be less than 10% owned across the board, basically, because I don't think I can, if I like, if if I play at all tonight, I'll play one lineup. And I don't think I want to stack the giants with my one lineup. I just don't know how you're going to be a winning player in the long run when you're playing guys at 30% owned. 
Um, start with the I'll start with the Colorado side because I do mm -hmm. think uh, I do like Colorado here. It's the, the frustrating thing. I guess what, what, that what makes it kind of neat is guys I usually like to play on Colorado are the lefties, and I don't really really feel like doing that against Wood. Um, so I would start with the righties, and the righties are pretty pretty expensive. So well, actually one of them. So CJ Crone is pretty expensive at fifty six hundred. Mm -hmm. So so he could be low owned as a result. Yeah, I think he will be less. I think he'll be around ten percent or so. Yeah, so there's that. And then obviously the guy who's going to get on, I imagine, is Grichik, um, from the right side. He's only 40, 4,500, but I would definitely play him. Mm -hmm. um, so may, may, maybe I could start with that. Um, Connor Joe, he's righty. Um, I, would, I, would, I just may, maybe just kind of my, I, I'm not even looking at the numbers. I just presume because of Wood's delivery that lefties can't hit it. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm, maybe it's just an illusion, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather play the righties, I guess. I don't really feel like playing Charlie Blackman against the lefty. I just don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, and I like Ryan McMahon, but I don't, I'd rather not play him either, but I don't know. So I would start with Colorado's cause I, I, I do, I would prefer to play them at lower ownership than play San Francisco. And the thing about San Francisco is that it's, it's the same thing they're, 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 they're low priced, but okay. So we're going back to the pitching for a second. The people that you could actually play San Francisco's and play probably both those high price guys if you want you know what i mean if you mm -hmm. want to play peralta and uh yeah. and severino you yeah. can do it so th these san francisco guys are going to be just through the roof owned. you know what i mean yep um so i'm i'm just gonna probably i don't either close my eyes and fade because this, this is a perfect thing for me to fade because because like you just said sanzatello went into san francisco the worst park in the world for hitters mm -hmm. and got lit up and now mm -hmm. he's coming back to Colorado. I, I would bet the under in this. He has you know, a, just, just for yeah. spite. You know what I mean? Um, he has a history so, of doing stuff like that, though. I, I mean, even this year, he, I mean, he's just he's a little he's just better at home, for, which is just really weird for a guy who pitches yeah, in court. You just but. know that San Francisco. I mean, I get it's not all about this type of stuff. But you know, San Francisco. They come up and they beat him up. They're like, oh, now we're getting back to now we're going to Coors and face, face this clown again. We're ready to freaking. It's not you know, life's not so easy in baseball. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Listen, especially a forty percent ownership, <laughs> right? Um, so I'll I'll probably I'll probably end up freaking xing them or something, or 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 limiting it to one, you know, per per lineup or something like that. Uh, or like you said, if I want to really put in the effort, like like you're doing, is I'm just going to just take the San Francisco guys that that are not going to be thirty to forty percent owned and just kind of kind of work that way. And that, and that certainly makes sense. But or if you again, do play the 30 to 40% own, just make sure you're doing it like a, a three man with a five man stack. That's going to be very low owned because or, it's really hard to get there, man. Or you're playing Odorizzi and, you know, yeah. and, and Syndergaard and, 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 and Bradish or something like that. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah. Syndergaard, yeah. And Syndergaard if you, for, if you want actual play. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so yeah, uh, again, that, that's why you, you, we can tell you who the best plays are, but that's not necessarily who you should play. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, All right. Let's go. Let's jump. Let's jump over to Minnesota and, and Oakland. Um, uh, this is weird to see. All of a sudden, like we still haven't had Chris Archer pitch more than four innings in a game. And at my early ownerships on two different sites, I see him at fifteen percent on DraftKings owned. I have no idea how or why that would be the case. If you're going to play a pitcher in this game, I think it should be Zach Logue. I think that he has got he's got good stuff. There's a wide range of outcomes with him. He has faced this team already one time, um, had five strikeouts in five innings, but get, did give up a couple of home, uh, sorry, a couple, yeah, a couple home runs. So, you know, didn't have a huge start or anything. His last time out was awesome against Detroit, uh, seven innings, struck out six, and uh, basically I didn't, didn't give up anything. So I, I, I think that I would, if I had to take one shot at anything in this game, it would probably be some Logue. And I don't mind any of the one-offs you want. We could make the same argument or a similar argument for Buxton that we that I made for um Acuna, but I prefer, I just would rather play Acuna and you bet Buxton against the lefty. It's pretty close. Um, and you, Gary Sanchez is, a, is an interesting one off uh, or a two man, a part of a two man or something like at 4k. Uh, but I, I personally am on the side of, of, I would rather play Logue than anything else in this game. Yeah, you just, you just ruined my, my, my impression because I, 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 I always thought it was L O Q U A E. I would say he was a lock, but I didn't even realize it was L O G U E. So it's Logue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so now I don't like him. Um, <laughs> actually, I do have him as kind of a uh, a, a a kind of a secondary option. Um, if you want, listen. If you want something low owned, like like we've been talking about, so I got I have I have really no problem with that. And I do think 
like airing your sentiments that I don't know if you were repeating them today or, or you know, from, from past couple of times he's pitched. I do think that, that Chris Archer probably has some good, some good stuff in him somewhere, you know? Yeah. Um, so there's going to be a point you know, he's going to, he's going to listen, he's going to pitch a good game, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, if you were going to bet on him pitching a good game, it'd probably be when you need a low owned guy and maybe when he pl- is up against Oakland, you know what I mean? Or something right. like that. So uh, I, listen, I really have no problem with either of these guys in those lineups. If you wanted to play chalk your hitters. I just don't understand the argument for him until he pitches five innings in a game. Like, I, know. I, I, I can't, it. I can't play a pitcher who doesn't pitch five innings. Like I don't, I it just can't get my head around it. And some of it you could say, well, he's thrown some pitches. I'm like, yeah, but that's because he's walking everybody, you know, three walks, three walks or more in three in three in four out of the last five games. Really, really hard for him to get there. Like if that happens now, this is the right matchup for it, but I, I personally am on the, and I'm an, I'm a, I'm a guy who's always been an archer fan and wanted him. I'm really disappointed in what's happened to his career. But I, I just don't think I could do it tonight. Yeah, so I'm not convinced about this this last game. In that, um, they people love to attack Bumgarner, and and, and the Dodgers just get a thousand runs a game. I, I, in general, I can't imagine how this team wouldn't be just insane chalk. You know, mm-hmm. um, it, with the exception of the fact that it's a San Francisco game and the Colorado game. So that this is my this is my initial take was that San Francisco and LA were the two my two, you know, just like without even ownership being included, like my, my two best plays. Um I just I just worry that I don't even say worry. I mean it's a big enough slate, I guess, that that because it's Bumgardner, maybe the Dodgers get pounded um in the ownership. I don't know. I have to kind of see. But like you said, maybe maybe I could be maybe this is the right approach. Maybe just start with the lefties on the yeah. Dodgers if I'm going to play them because I really could care. You know what I mean? Like Bumgarner, mm-hmm. I mean, luck he's gone anyway. You know, it's pretty soon. Yeah, um, it doesn't matter. They don't. It doesn't matter for Max Muncy or Freddie Freeman. These guys hit lefties. Yeah, and Bellinger. And really, so, so this was really funny. So, so, so Matt was uh, Matt's been home the last couple of days, and we we're watching some of this. He don't really like baseball. We were watching whatever, and all the other stuff was 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 over, and the Philly game. The Phillies were up uh, like eight to seven going into the eighth, uh, seventh inning. Yes, uh, uh, they were they were up yeah. yes seven eight seven, and I said to uh, I said to him I said why don't we just get we should just get like a freaking run line or, excuse we should get get a line of the Dodgers because they're 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 basically like a lot to win and they're like down eight seven you probably get like three to one or something like that and he said let's look at it he says. and he says and literally as he's looking it up it went to you know Philly scored I'm like nine seven I'm like oh yeah. Man. And then, then I said, uh, and then he, I, he says, well, you know, if you want the next thing, you can get a, uh, you can get a odds from the score run the next inning at like plus two and a half to one. And I'm like, ah, oh, maybe wherever it is. Or you can think you're minus 160, the Dodgers get a hit in the eighth inning. But I'm sure whatever we do, we're going to lose. He's like kind of in one of those moods right now. Mm-hmm. I'm like, let's not do anything, but I just promise you the Dodgers are winning somehow. So, so he went up, he went upstairs, whatever, because he didn't really like, like to watch. And then after the Dodgers, they got nothing in the eighth. Then they scored it, got a two run homer in the ninth to cut it to nine nine. Mm-hmm. And I said, and then they ended up losing in the tenth. I mean, this is like a perfect example why it's impossible to bet. Because if anything, Matt and I were going to do, first we were going to take the Dodgers score in the eighth, nothing. You're right. Mm-hmm. We we're going to take them to get a hit in the eighth, nothing. And then we would have gotten teased with the big run line, you know, to, to come back right. from nine seven right. to get nine nine and then lose anyway. So in any case, the Dodgers are on, like you've been saying, the Dodgers are just on another level as far as a baseball team right now. Um, and no, they did just come off of a really bad weekend series, but yeah, whatever. But I mean, like they, if, if they're, if they're down four runs, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So the, the fact is, is that um, the Dodgers look like a really, really great stack. I hope they don't get on that much, but I think they will. And I think I'm going to start with the lefties in the spot. Um, I'm not going to play any bum Garner and I'm not going to play any guns. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm interested to see where the ownership ends up on the Dodgers. Cause I mean, we talk, I talk about this all the time. The one thing the Dodgers have trouble with, it's weird because they've got these these righties that are great against lefties. and lefties oh, Are the lefties, lefties with tricks? <laughs> lefties who are throw off speed. I mean, if you look at Bumgarner's history against the Dodgers, it's the most dominant dominance of any pitcher by far against the Dodgers. I, mean, I think there's a combined, I'm looking at it right now, they hit 140 off of them. And, and that's 212 at bats. <laughs> um, or no, 180 off of them, excuse me. Uh, that's pretty just crazy just to think about. Um I, of course, am, um, this most of that was when Bumgarner was still awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's not awesome anymore, but he is cap- capable enough to where I might stay a little bit away from the Dodgers tonight. Um, 
I, I, I could see a good argument for stacking. I could see a good argument for fading. Um, uh, I don't know. It's, it would depend on ownership. And I think that the Turner bets is going to be really popular. Yeah. And I think everybody else is sort of in, in between. Maybe Will Smith gets some ownership as well. I don't think you're going to see anybody playing uh, the Freemans and the Bellingers, especially Muncie sort of in between. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of up in the air for me. So I think I, I might take, I might take a shot at, at one of the Toronto or the Yankees, uh, especially Toronto at their, their current ownership is really intriguing to me. And uh, I like using the secondary stack of, I don't want to fade entirely San Francisco. I just think if I play one lineup, having three of them is okay enough with me and uh, you know, mix them with Toronto or something like that. And then, then all of a sudden you've got a, a pretty low owned stack that gives you a chance. I also think playing Bumgarner, I mean, playing Syndergaard instead of Severino, you know, makes a lot of sense. And he's going to be probably one third the ownership, if if not, maybe more. So that that's probably the ways that I would try and get different on this slate. I just want to say one other thing. I, mean, I guess yeah, everybody has to experience it before they really understand what I'm talking about. But, you know, when you when you play chalky stacks, how difficult it is to really, really, you know, smash. Right. I mean, the other day, um, one of the days where Kansas City was in Colorado, I, I just decided there was just no way I was fading it. You know, I figured I'd just get over the field on everybody and just freaking just almost lock it in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like 80, 90 percent Kansas City. Right. Mm -hmm. And they scored a million runs and everybody seen the smash. And I did OK, but I didn't like kill it. You know what I mean? And, and it's weird. You know, like you say, OK, this guy gets a hit. This guy does. Oh, I'm killing it. But like you don't really move up the ladder board that much, you know what I mean? Right, because right. other people have the same things, you know. And and you're like, you get this feeling that that when you play like twenty percent on guys, and it's not even the feeling. It, it, you just have to almost be perfect, mm -hmm. you know, to get to get that right because you're just fighting with all these other people. Like on the other hand, when you see some guy that you have on some stack that's like two percent on hit a home run or whatever, and you see you go up like eight hundred spots in the freaking in in the standings. You're like, whoa, you know what I mean? So, so mm -hmm. it's, you have to kind of experience it to really, really feel how important it is to get, to get different on pretty much all of DFS, but especially baseball when it's so event driven, yep. you know, like, like basketball, you don't notice because some guy hits like a, gets like a basket. It like barely affects the slate. You know what I mean? Right. But one, one swing, one millimeter off and you get a freaking home run by Miguel Cabrera, as opposed to a home run right. by, by 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 uh, uh by oh. branded belts you know whatever right. and the next thing you know the whole slate's different you know yeah um, so uh totally so that, that i guess that that's kind of like i don't want to say my rant but just my observation is try your best to force yourself off of chalk hitting unless again and, and this is not easy you know bobby is really really good at at taking chalky teams and making it a non-chalky play you know what i mean like by maybe going a one four seven eight or like a one two six nine or something like that mm -hmm. or or doing one-offs that are just you know a little lower owned and things like that that's hard you know mm -hmm. and you can definitely do the work to do that but if you're going to be that that robot that says i want five man this i want five man that nothing but one through six you know whatever it is you're probably better off just xing those teams out um right. be, be, because you're just never it just puts yourself a lot of pressure on to be perfect and being perfect in baseball is just a lot to ask. Yeah, I agree with the, with all of that. I I did I did I do think though if you could if you did want to do if you, you feel strongly about the Giants situation and you really yeah. do want to play that kind of thing, I think that the way to do it is to play. Uh, you play one of Flores or Belt with Longoria okay. because there the position crossover is the one way you can get different on those kind of things. And Flores is first base, third base. Longoria is third base. Belt is first base. Belt will be the most popular. So maybe a Flores Longoria with Joey Bart and Luis Gonzalez and then a wraparound dish stack, because that's that's like the only way that I could find really to get different in that in that game. Everybody else is going to be 25 percent or higher owned, um, except for those guys. So, yeah. But anyway, so that's what that's so I, I, I'm not fully stacking them tonight. Even if I play one, I'm, I, I do like them as a secondary stack option and hopefully my guys are the right guys. But I totally don't mind. I definitely get the argument for just completely fading entirely. There's no nothing. I mean, that's that's the strategy you should be implementing in general with cores. It's just at these ownerships, you should know. It's the same thing with golf. You just don't play a guy who's 30% owned in golf, like basically ever, except for John Rahm in that one tournament where he's like, you know, 100 times better than the second best guy in the field. <laughs> like, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, all right, Cheats, anything else before we get out of here? No, we're good. All right, well, good luck to everybody. I'm sorry not to be around today. I do look forward to catching up with you guys, hopefully by live tomorrow. 
And uh, again, feel free to hit me up in the in the Discord general chat, and I will be there. So good luck, everybody.